Ready, ready, ready. <clears throat> Father, any fear that we have, replace it right now with your peace and your joy. And we ask the spirit of wisdom and revelation to fill and touch every single person that's listening or will listen, every person that's here. We want to connect with you <clears throat> and experience who you are with what we're going through, causing us to grow and grow in our thinking and my attitude, my strength, and now will not be my will, but yours be done. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. <clears throat> uh, so everyone knows uh, to like America and, and trying to live out this identity thing, and um, you know, we all go through struggles and, and stuff that we're going through is uh, we just have this mind-filled battle going on and the enemy wants to lie and cheat and, and take everything from you physically and mentally just drain you and absorb everything that you have, everything you, you thought about, your, your relationship with Christ, your relationship with your family, your friends, everything that you're, you're in, work, and strip all that back. I started to, after listening to Pastor Age and talk about, you know, God comes first and He does come first, and then and then your wife and and I thought, man, this is it's been. I, I know that it's coming and I know that she's going to come, and I thought, right, I need to I need to plow everything that I can in this circumstance and be who Jesus wants me to be for her. And I need to, so I need to show it. I need to, I need to love on her so much. I need to, and then I'm, the more I started think about it, and the more I was digging around, trying to find out who Jesus is going to be for her, and, and I had such, like, we've had such a great time ever since me trying to find out who Jesus is going to be. Our relationships just changed massively because it's no longer what I think. It's no longer what where I think she should be or how she's going to get here. It, that has become so irrelevant now. It's living day by day and loving on her the way that God loves me and finding out who I need to be. So I'm just thankful for what God's given me. But if you take into consideration your, your circumstance or what you're going through at that time or what you're going through, like some advice that I can give that I could you know, safely say it, it is 100% works is that your relationship with Jesus Christ Amen. just your relationship with Jesus it's taking time to talk and offload and flush out all the enemies the carnal minds thinking flush it out because it's not who you are all that stuff that's created by yourself is just damaging who you are. That's not how God sees you. So it's not what you're not. It's about who you're becoming. It's about who you are in Jesus. It's not about what you are like even right now because you're still going to keep searching for the Jesus inside you every single day to pull you out of it. I'm still going to go through some of the same things, possibly... But I think Jesus wants to, you to attend it in his way rather than your way and become and see it from his point of view rather than your point of view. And everything that I start to try and look at at the moment, it sounds daft, but it's almost like I'm having an out loud conversation with Jesus going, okay, so financially it's not great, but how do you want to be in that financial situation for me? How do you want to be for me in it? Now, 
this is just a, a prime example. We didn't have the fuel to go over to Jim's boat and he wanted to go to a new place in Wales. We didn't have the finances to fuel it, but then I overheard something at work where a jobs fell down and out of curiosity, I asked the question, whereabouts was it is? Do you not think that God knew exactly where it was? It was 20 minute drive away from the, uh, the marina that Jim's been looking to move his boat to. So I piped her to say, you know what, I, I, I'll do it. I'll do it. That, that's that far away from where Jim wants to have his boat. And I thought, great. Save Jim coming all the way back, being with his age, driving all the way back here to drive four hours into Wales to find out that, <clears throat> you know what, it's either too expensive or it's not quite what he's looking for. We took pictures when we were there. Uh, we got loads of information and we're taking it back to him. But because I was doing a job for work, obviously they're paying me for work, and I told them I was going to go off to this marina, and I said, that, that's fine, you're helping us out, you're doing a favour, um, we're going to pay your fuel expenses, we'll pay for a hotel for you to stay out with. And, and I was like, oh, you know, why? hang on a minute, what's going on here? Like, I said, I don't need a hotel, but what I, what I will ask is, yeah, obviously it's my weekend with the kids, and, you know, uh, so you use your own car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So by that they do by per the mile, so they pay you per mile, and, and it was so in our favour. It was so in our favour, we was able to enjoy, have the day to ourselves, and it was wonderful, it really was. It was really long, it was testing with the kids in the car, but what God had done is that he already planned and he already had the end result before I even asked the question. Because he want, he, my heart was to do something for Jim and God already made it. And it was just, it was awesome. And we can all testify and say, that, you know, God, he is able and he can do these things. But you know it with me and we work, you know how much with work and they struggle uh, and you want to change their perspective and change the way they... You don't need to change work. God needs to change work. You're there for God to change them around you and I just thought this is amazing because you shine at work. You don't see that you shine so much at work. Well, God sees that you shine and God wants them to see you shining and he gives you favour. And it was just awesome. So it's not about what's go, uh, about who you are, it's about who you're becoming. You see, you're relying on Jesus every single day. That was just a small thing. But when I look back, I thought, man, that is a mighty move, what you've just done there. And I thank you for that mighty move, because I, I really know work. And you all know your workplaces. And for, for that to move, that's like a mountain. And it's awesome. And it worked in favour of because of what Jesus is doing. And we're going to spend a lot of time talking about who we are, <clears throat> who we're not, and who we should be. And if we're doing that, then the enemy is creating a stronghold. Because before I went, before I realised that I, I created not not what we've been taught here, but what you take from here, what you create from here. And we're always told to go home, study, go clear it with the Holy Spirit, take your downtime. If you don't do that, and there's a reason why it's said, if you don't do that, what happens is you create so many walls in your mind. Everything about yourself, everything about who you are, what you are in the situation. If you have chose to take offence from something that's being said, then guess what? It becomes a stronghold. Your distance between what God has for you and who you are and what you've become in your own might and your own strength. And I started to realise that because of the way things got broken down to me, I built up so many barriers. I was. Not how Jesus sees me, not how God sees me, of who I was. I'm looking in the mirror and I'm telling myself that you're not this and you're not that and you're not strong enough and you should have really done it this way and you should have done that way and kids shouldn't have came this way and your wife shouldn't have came this way and you shouldn't be doing this and you shouldn't be doing that 
And you know what? You start telling yourself, actually, you know what? That's, that's becoming a blockade. And that's why I haven't got it. No, you have got it. You're telling yourself you haven't got it because of the circumstance or the situation you're in. So you're telling yourself, you're feeding the enemy with your thoughts. And the word of God says, capture your thoughts in obedience to his word. And Jesus loves his son. And his son is now in you. So he loves you. So it's not that you're done all this stuff. When we heard the pastor say, you turn around and see grace and mercy. And guess what? You see grace and mercy. But when you're having it out in your situation, you're not seeing grace and mercy. You're seeing who I am or who you believe to be. You're not seeing grace and mercy. You're not seeing the confidence of Jesus Christ. You're not seeing who you actually are. You're not seeing Jesus' identity in you. You're calling out every single shot that the enemy wants you to believe that you are. And you stop yourself from receiving what God has for you. Mm. So if we're doing that, then the enemy is creating a stronghold that needs breaking. Why? Because even when you gain... uh, you get something and gain it, even in your circumstances, even if it's long and you've made that happen, it still won't be good enough. you still be saying the things about yourself in the next circumstance, in the next situation, and over and over again. You keep repeating the same things, but you've, you've beat that barrier, you've beat that stronghold, you've done it, and then when you're, you're greeted by something else, you end up repeating the same stuff from the last circumstance on yourself, over yourself, creating another stronghold, another wall. And God's saying, but Jesus has defeated all of this. You have the keys to the kingdom. You walk around free in the kingdom. But you bound yourself in captivity, in chains and shackles, because you're talking death over yourself, or you're talking words of doubt over yourself or you're, you're talking weakness over yourself or you're talking a lack of confidence over yourself everything that you walk around in the kingdom is free he's giving it to you so change the way that you see yourself in the kingdom rather than where you are in your circumstance and you'll be free have you received it physically? maybe not but guess what? you're free mentally you're free from it. And you're, you're relaxing in the kingdom because you understand that the Heavenly Father has got the outcome for you and that you're going to be met with the outcome and you're, you're actually looking farther at the outcome rather at the situation. So your happiness and your joy and your peace and everything that James 1 says that accounts it all joy actually becomes joyful in that situation rather than looking at the misery that you create around yourself. So I started to get upset, I started to get miserable about uh, circumstances with Jan, and I'm thinking, oh, I started beating myself up because I'm trying to strive for something that Jesus is already doing. I'm starting to beat myself up, striving for something, and I'm trying to look in the Word of God for, for a time that Jesus strove for something. I'm trying to look to see, did he strive for something? No. Then why are you striving for it? Because Jesus is inside of me and I believe that. So if Jesus is inside of me, I can't strive. We can't strive. Our flesh wants to strive. Our flesh wants to rise up against the word of God and strive for something. But God says, you don't need to strive because I have it. Here's the key. So if God turns around and says, look... I want you to lock that door right there. Yeah, but this good, it, it's good, it's, it's flowing, it's, you know, it, there's no wedge that's came in between it so far. He, he said, I want you to shut it. And your flesh is saying, don't shut it because what you've got going on at the moment is awesome. And you're rising up against the word of the God and actually he's telling you he wants to shut something so he can open something. So he wants to bind that up, that which is on earth, and release that which is in heaven but we're opening and keeping that door open. Sometimes we're keeping that door open. Sometimes we don't actually realise that what God's saying is the actual truth. Because we believe what we see with our physical eyes is exactly because it's comfortable, it feels good, it's tangible, everything's right about the situation, but actually, is it right? 
when God wants you to actually do something and do something about it. And this is where his majesty comes in and the supernatural power of who he is because, you know what, everything that this was built around way back, the, the trips to Romania, Egypt, India, all those things, how did it come about? It came by stepping in faith. It came by opening up a door of faith. It came by doing the word of faith. It didn't come by, hold on a minute, well, let's just work out how much we've got here. Um, let, let's just figure this one out. It actually came by, you know, if you catch hold of what I have and pass it on. And then, because when we've gone out together and it's good, the spirit between us is having a whoopee time. So the partnership with Jesus inside of both of us is going, it's good. Pass it on. Introduce that to more people. Why? Because it's stronger. And if you can move mountains, why, why would we want to do it? Why would we want it? We want to do something that's, that we watch God unfold who he is. Because when we watch him unfold who he is, it's more spectacular than anything that we try and do. Amen. It's the best thing ever. So I got to meet a Polish guy this morning. Well, he was originally from Poland, but he spent all, most of his life here. 74 or 5. And I was just getting to the cash point, And he's come, he's going down the steps with a cane. And managed to have a chat with him, just talk to him. No pressure or anything like that. We just greeted each other, saying hello, and one thing to another, and I was able to uh, lay hands on his leg. He had a stroke. He had a stroke. So I'm saying, do you have feeling in that leg? And he said, no. And I said, I just want to show you something. That's all I wanted. I just wanted to show him a portion of Jesus Christ. And I said, if you don't have feeling, what do you have now? Warmth. So how can you have warmth when you had no feeling in your leg? How can you feel that? I don't know. So what I was trying to do is unfold before his eyes the kingdom. So he becomes free. Because everything that's been said against him is everything that it can be changed. We left on this because this is, he was, why... Why is the devastation? Why is this? Why is that? Why All the questions you normally get. I said, look, don't even worry about all that stuff that's going on. Jesus loves you so much. There's no coincidence while we met this morning we're going to have a chat. But I told him where, exactly where we were, right? And I just crossed the road uh, because he was from Poland. I, I only know a few words. and I think you probably know loads. But I was able to, you know, uh, then ask him, uh, you know, how are you? And hello and, and I should be saying like bye papa and, and he was just and he was just like oh man you're so, you're so good so good and I was like man look at about three or four words but they're so thankful and this guy as I've walked off and just put my hand on the, on the car door to open it he shouted me and he came walking all the way back to me and says tell me again where, where your church is so the harvest is now. Amen. It's now. It's not when your mind says, it's now. The word of God is very clear. It's now. But how, is, how does it become now to you? How does it become now? You need to change the way that you see and think put on the perspective of Jesus Christ. Say, lend me your glasses, Dad, because I need to see what you're seeing. Put those spectacles on me, because I need to start looking the way that you look. So start doing it with your loved ones like I did. Start doing it with your neighbours. Start doing it with those. Why? Because you end up looking at them and going, I'm so excited for what God's going to bring you away. You're more excited about what God's going to bring for them, because you know you've experienced, you've tasted it, and it's, it's so amazing. But when you're at work or someone's upset you and annoyed you, why do you not think the same? Why do you not carry on thinking that, God, you're going to be amazing in this? 
You're going to be so good in this. And I can't wait to, uh, for you to unfold yourself in this. We don't. Why? Because we let our flesh rise up against the word of God. And it changes our whole persona and perspective of what he has for us. We distance ourselves from Jesus, from the love that he has for you. Why? Because we don't believe that we're, we're then good enough. So our relationship is about not how good I am and how I can't be used and how I never can be. Our relationship is that Jesus has done it and his spirit is, is there. He told, just imagine what the disciples would have been when he says, I'm going, I'm going. I'm going to leave you with my spirit. They, they experienced the tangible Jesus. They experienced the tangible Jesus. Think about it when you're out there. That's what the world wants to see, tangible Jesus. He says, but don't worry. I'm going to leave your spirit, my spirit with you. And this spirit is going to guide you, and he's going to be your counsellor, and he's going to be your comfort. Guess what? That spirit that's in you, that's what they're looking for out there. They're looking for the tangible Jesus in you. They're looking for that. They want to grab hold and know. And they want to taste that God is good. And they want to feel the love of Jesus Christ. But how can they if you don't believe that you house the kingdom? In your circumstance, how can, that, how can, you, how can you give that advice? How can you give them the spirit if you don't believe it for yourself? That it should work for you and not for others. Or it shouldn't work for you, but it's going to work for us. No, Jesus is right through. He, he never missed anything before the cross. The end of the cross. He never, before he was laid down and risen again, he never missed a, a thing. Because right back in the Old Testament, when it says, right, devastation is going to come by your way. And all the disease and everything. He, he did the whole lot. God knew that what man was going to develop. God knew what was going to devastation was going to come. And then the end of times in Revelation, the book that's supposed to be the best and a blessing, all that devastation that carries on, he knows about it. That's what we dig out to find and tell these people, like the Polish man. What about the devastation? If you don't know you, who, you, who Jesus is for you in it, you can't tell how others how he's going to be for them. And we experience it by our identity of Jesus Christ. Well, Jesus Christ has conquered the grave. So guess what? All this is already done. And we're, 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 we're going to be housed by the kingdom, walk in the kingdom. And all those that follow Jesus Christ and do the things of the word of God and they're asking them to do, guess what? You're going to be taken to that place. I'm subject to Jesus' spirit. Therefore, I'm one with his attributes of the spirit and self-control. And if I can control what comes out of my mouth, that's one of the things I started to look at is self-control. Not just with, like, say, eating or drinking or all those things. I was starting to self-control. The things that were coming out of my mouth start having a bit of self-control because it's the spirit of God. You start taking that in. Self-control says, and go on, zip your mouth because what's about to come out of your mouth is going to cause you a little bit of devastation. And then you're going to ask God, why? How come? This is. And God's saying, well, take on my attribute of Jesus. Take a little bit of self-control in what you're saying. Start speaking the, the words of the kingdom out of your mouth rather than the devastation. So what comes out of my mouth and say about it and how I think, what do you see, Jesus? And how do you want me to be, Jesus? And that's what I start tackling with some of the situations and that, that are going on I, I stop myself and go oh, what do you want to be Jesus how do you want to be any Jesus ok I know that I ain't right in this and that and what I have been saying but what do you want to be in it because you can wrap yourself in what I have been saying and keep yourself there or you can lob it off and go right I'm sick and tired of the things coming out of my mouth I rebuke it and I ask for forgiveness Father but I want to start from where you are and what you see because when you do greet people out there, they don't want the word of God coming out of your mouth and go home and then it's all right for you. It's all right for you to be like that, but it's not all right for them to be like that. And I started to flush myself out because I wanted to be as pure as I can be. If I get it wrong... When we heard the pastor, we're going to get it wrong. We are going to get it wrong. But it's about the righteousness of Jesus Christ in us that starts pointing it right. So 
Do we look around and see grace and mercy? Or do we hold ourselves bound to captivity and keep ourselves there? You know what? God has got an awesome plan for this church and he has got an awesome plan for the individuals in it and he has got an awesome plan for the ones that come into it and the growth that it's going to be. He's also got an awesome plan for Redditch and he's also got an awesome plan for the United Kingdom and he's also got a plan for (coughs) those of his children that want to follow. He has an awesome plan. What is that plan? I don't know what that plan is but I I want you to tell me what my plan is. I want to partner with that plan. If we partner with the plans that he has for us, guess what? The plans that he has for us is his kingdom. If we worry about the things of how to get it, let's not forget that we move by faith because of who he is. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And no man should get to our father except through me. So I'm entitled to see the father, right? Because I've accepted Jesus Christ into my life. You either tell yourself that you are going to see the Father or you bound yourself to, I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Saviour, but there's things that are wrong with me. This is what's wrong with me. I can't do this and I can't do that and I'm not going to be able to do this. Or, yes, deal with my righteousness, Lord Jesus Christ. Deal with the right that's in me. Deal with me. (coughs) Where does he want to take you? To high places. What does he want you to see? Greater things. So, we just sang <coughs> praise be the name of Jesus praise be the name of Jesus praise be the name of Jesus praise be the name just imagine God sitting on his throne room looking at you and the Jesus that is inside of you and, the, and, the, and it's rising up because praise be the name of Jesus 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 you start saying that over yourself Praise be the name of Jesus. And think about it. I house you. Praise be the name of Jesus. I house you, Jesus. In my temple, I house you. I house the kingdom. Think about it for a minute. What you say. I house the kingdom of God. I house Jesus Christ. I house everything that he'd done. I house that. That is an awesome power to house. You have it. You house the ability to walk free. You house the ability to be set free. You house, you house all of that stuff. Equipped, fully equipped to tell people out there they house the kingdom when they accept Jesus Christ. They house the kingdom. They house the kingdom to free, freeness, addiction. All of the stuff that Satan robs you as soon as you speak the words of God. You watch the connection that you have when you talk to somebody. Why? Because they're listening. They're listening because they hear the word of God. And there's a battle that's going on between that person and what they're listening to. And their flesh, because they don't know, will continuously rise up against the word of God. But what did God do? (laughs) He's defeated it. He's defeated all of that stuff. So it doesn't matter what they say against you, it doesn't determine who you are and what you house. It doesn't. It can't because you house the kingdom. It's killed it. It's killed it. So everything that you say comes with power. But it comes with power against you or for you. You speak it out. That's powerful. So we said that God creates by his mouth. He speaks it into being. So you say it and it comes into being, right? You just say it and know it's going to come into being. You say it and see it right the way through. Or do we say it, haven't seen it, and therefore it's not right? Because he's true right through to the end. He's true and faithful right through to the end. God wants you to flip and switch your circumstances around. Learn how to use what we have in that situation to not only build yourself up, to build someone else up in that area to break free. Overcome and walk out who they are and be more effective and go against the impossible odds. We are at the moment going against impossible odds right now. Look around. Impossible odds, right? 
That's what the flesh sees, impossible odds. But God doesn't see the impossible odds. He sees that the impossible is done and made possible because he's possible. So he wants to stick us in these situations so that he gets glorified because the impossible gets done through him. Not through us. Look around. It's it's a lot emptier. But it's more possible. It's even more possible still. It's even more possible now. It's it's more possible even with the one person that he wants to choose to do. So I'm more favourable if it's six or seven people that he wants to do, all committed for the one thing. We've heard it in the finance results, in the financial team results. The things that you've had to go up against, the things you've had to do, almost seemed an impossible task. And I'm sure that you've had testimonies of, of massive turnaround because of God. But what about if you got scared and fearful through it and tried to do it by your might? We wouldn't have the same result. We'd probably still be where we were. But because we've done it in such a manner that only God can get the glory, what about if we use that same concept in that, in everything that we do? What about if we use that same context or concept in the worship team? What about if we drill that into people, not only with the worship team, but as an individual out there? Because you can use these testimonies but you don't believe we can do it. Why? Because you're seeing impossible odds. <coughs> you're not seeing the possible. We've seen the possible before. But I want to see more. I want to see more and more and more of that. And I know God that he's just getting us to that place. Just rectifying the few things that need doing. And then that door's going to open. Mm-hmm. He's going to lock one and he's going to open and up another. Mm-hmm. And he's going to lock one of those doors that we think we should keep open. And he wants to shut it. He wants to shut it so we can open up another one. (coughs) So he wants to open up not only a door here, but he wants to open up a door in Africa and he wants to open up a door in Romania and he wants to open up a door in Australia and he wants to open up a door in all these places that's if you see what he sees and he wants to open up big doors for the pastor (laughs) he wants to open up big doors for the pastor but it comes with having faithful people around for us to see Amen (coughs) that showed me up there so we, we need to learn how to use what we have in that situation so that is stewarding what you have already. Steward it to the best of your abilities. It doesn't matter whether you think something's going to come your way and it upsets you and it frustrates you. Steward what you have to the best of your ability. Even if it's making tea and coffee, steward it. Even if it's serving for the pastor, steward it. Because it's growth and it's change and that's what we go by. <coughs> so, he is our saviour. He is our Lord. And we need to know him in both, right? Salvation was our entry point. But the end goal is that he becomes Lord in every situation. In everything. So we're fighting a spiritual battle to get free and stay free. So through our life experiences, we are given the anointing, the power and the, the... practice this absolutely astonishing nature and awesome identity of Jesus Christ so that we can become free. Does the word say that we're not going to come against any trials and tribulations? No. So how do we tackle them? With Jesus. So that we experience our count in our encounters of grace and mercy that change everything because that's who he is. He wants you to have encounters with permission. He wants you to have encounters with favour. I vouched for one of those yesterday, thank you Jesus. He wants you to encounter all of those things that you do in your everyday life. He wants you to encounter his love. He wants you to encounter his peace. 
He wants to encounter his joy. He wants to encounter his, <coughs> his uh, magnificent, uh, magnificent, magnificent, magnificent. I still, I still, I, I trembled over that word. <coughs> he wants you to enjoy his power. He wants you to enjoy who he is. But how do you do that if you can't see past your situation? See, if you want to leave here today and not take anything, that's your choice. If you want to go home, sit there and go back to some misery because it suits your flesh. If you want to go back and upset yourself and stay there and be bound to your flesh, then that's your choice. You're going to have a choice in everything that you start to do now. Everything that you go and do Everything that you look at, everything that you read, everything that you see, everything that you do, you're going to have a choice. And your choice is whether you pick it up mentally and you treat it with the same observation as Jesus Christ or not. Whether you read it in the same context as him. Whether you look at it from the same perspective as him or not. Whether you see yourself from his perspective or not. In everything that you do, from when you finish this meeting and talk to one another, and when you get outside and when you go home, you're going to be challenged by the things that your flesh sees, reads, does, touches, tastes. You're going to be challenged by it. But it's your choice whether you to pick it up or put it down. Whether you choose to pick it up or bin it. Whether you choose to pick it up and expect to see the expectation of glory through it or not. See those things come to pass or not. Or whether you want to just see those things come, take residence and stay. And then we ask ourselves why it hasn't shifted yet. And then we ask ourselves why it hasn't moved yet. And we ask ourselves why. And have you asked Jesus Christ why? Have you asked him why? Have you asked God why? Have you sat before God and asked him why? Has he told you that it could be you? It could be the way that you think. It could be the way that you look. It could be the way that you talk. It could be the way that you see things. It could be the way that you're doing things. It could be the way that you're perceiving everything. All these situations. It could be the way that you're doing it. Maybe he wants you to do it differently to the way that you used to do it. Maybe he wants you to change your perspective. Maybe he wants you to do a lot of changing in your life so that you start to get the results that he has. Maybe you keep circling that mountain because you haven't changed your way of thinking about the situation. Maybe you haven't thought differently for a change. Maybe you've thought about the same thing because the repetitiveness of it is drilled into your mind, you've taken a stronghold to it, and you're expecting to see the same thing. Guess what? You've already thought it. So you it's already in your heart. So it's, you can, guess what? You're going to see it again. But if you change the way that you think and turn around and say, I'm sick and tired of circling that mountain and now I am going to change the way I think about it and I am going to look differently and I am going to partner with you, Jesus. And no matter how tough it is, I'm going to do it. Why? Because I know your result is better than my result. I know the way you think is better than the way I think. The way that you look at it is better than the way I look at it. And it all becomes different. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. We're not waiting for an event to happen because it's already happened and it's in that dwelling place. And when it happens, this event, the topic becomes big. It becomes endless. It becomes endless. It becomes so big because what we say about it is bigger because we're talking like Jesus. And everything is bigger because we're talking like Jesus. And in us, we've placed Jesus and we wonder why it seems things to take so long. It's because it's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The abundance of God is fullness and his favour. The life of Christ, Jesus, the expectation of glory. What is it so important? It's in our relationship. There is a territory out there and it's got our name on it. The territory out here, it's got our name on it. Everything that you say, it's got your name on it. It's got your name on it. It's got your name on it. It's got your name on healing. It's got your name on prosperity. It's got your name on health. It's got your, your name on his Jesus. Jesus all over it. Jesus all over it. Jesus all over it. So, Father, 
send forth your perfect saints right now. So it could be in your workplace, it could be at home, it could be in your name, it could be your relative, it could be your friend, it could be yourself, and he's calling you to fit the circumstance with Jesus and find out who he is for you in it. Why? Because you want to bow before the king and get the kingdom results. His majesty is attached to it, discovering the kingdom and what it is for you. His majesty is attached for it. So we're going to roll out Thessalonians 2.18. It says he's a hindering spirit, delays and opposes and obstructs, frustrates. John 10.10 says there's a spirit out there to seek, kill and destroy. 2 Corinthians 2.11 says he's a schemer whose plans for our city and our region. John 14.30 is a ruler of this world and binds them and keeps them in ignorance. Matthew 12.2.26, he runs a well-organized kingdom. But he's not as good as the Lord. Amen. Revelations 12, 10 says, he accuses the brethren. This is all words of the enemy. This is what, this is, he's identifying what he does. All these scriptures here, and there's plenty more that starts to show who he is. But it's not the Lord. It's not Jesus. We don't get caught up in what the enemy has and what he has come and what he's doing when we're walking the kingdom, we see that he's a hindering spirit and we see that he's destroying and we see what he's doing and we see that he has not got victory. We see it because we're walking in that spirit. We're walking with the kingdom. But on the other hand, if you want to read it and get hindered by the spirit, if you want to be opposed and obstructed and frustrated and if you want to be killed and be destroyed and if you want to have him be a planner of schemes around you and if you want him to rule and blind you and if you want him to keep you in ignorance and if you want him to run this well-organised kingdom around you, guess what? Then remain there. If you don't want it, sit in the kingdom and say, I bind and break everything that you have on me, around me. I demand you to be loosened right now in Jesus' name. Kingdom authority commands it to go and it goes in Jesus' name. Keeping it is being in the spirit continuously. In that place. Amen? Amen? So, Father, we just thank you right now that you have killed us, hindering spirit, but he does come to seek and destroy. But we see it because we see what you see. We want to change the way that we think. We want to understand who you are in our circumstances. We want to bow before the king because the king does everything in perfection. The king does everything that's so majestic. He does such... Uh, an amazing, astonishing job in everything that he does. And we want that spirit. We want to take full control of that spirit and partner with that spirit because the doors that you want to open, we want to open. The doors that you want to shut, we want to shut. The things that you want bound in on earth, we want them bound. The things that you want released from heaven, we want them released, Father, in everything we do. And we're going to come into agreement in in fewer number that we are right now. That, Father, you have spoke to me this morning. You've reminded me some of the things that I need to change, some of the things that I need to do, some of the things I need to repent for. But grace and mercy turns around and says, Son, I love you so much that you continue your faithfulness with me and the partnership of Jesus Christ that I'll just pick you up and I love you for who you are because you are my son. And I look at you and I look at my son. So not who you are. It's who you are in me. It's your identity. You're my son. You're a direct direct line to Jesus Christ. And I thank you for that Holy Spirit. So right now, in everything that we say and we do, let it be the words of the kingdom. Let us not be bound to the things that we think about ourselves, the situations, the circumstances, others, what they should or shouldn't be doing, how far they should or shouldn't be. Father, rectify that in me and all. That I need to know that if I can love them the same way that you love me, then I'm going to show them who they are and they're going to be free from that. And there's going to be quicker growth because we're going to do it your way rather than my way. And I thank you for that Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. And if, I was just about to say, if, we want to pray for each other. Let's pray for each other. <laughs> Stay there. Come on, Scott. Nick, you stretch out your hands. Others that are around. I won't let my circumstances stop me going forward. 
to you you answer and something's triggered today in what you heard so he's going to give it over to you right now everything the doors that need to be closed close them and the doors that need to be opened open right now in Jesus name but more importantly the way that he thinks about himself now because of what's happened, release him right now in Jesus' mighty name. That's not how you see him. Because your thoughts are greater, your ways are greater, and the Jesus in Christ, the Jesus Christ inside is greater. And that's what we're walking in. So for this circumstance and the ones that are to come, Father. We put this spirit of recognition into him right now. That he identifies the things that come his way. Not with his flesh. Not with his mind, but the mind of Christ. Amen. And he sees it with the eyes of Jesus Christ. Amen. So right now, Father, just put words of wisdom into him. Knowledge and understanding of who he is. Let this new journey be so exciting and have a desire and this passion again to seek you out in a different way not the same way that we've he's been doing in the circumstances that he's been in but continuously change his way of thinking and everything because if we believe that it's not over and there's a reason why things still need to be fulfilled and people are still coming for ministry Father let it be known that he still can take these journeys if he wants to take these journeys that the words of the enemy that he spoke into you the lies that he's created and the lies the deception the torment that he's caused in his way of thinking, Father, we eradicate it right now in Jesus' name. And let go. Let go of it right now in Jesus' name. Every foul word that you spoke against yourself, every word that you spoke against yourself in your circumstances, let it go right now. And let the love of Jesus Christ enter in. Enter in. Holy Spirit, where they say they can't find anything, we know why they can't find anything. But what he's struggling with mentally, reveal to him. Reveal to him, Lord. He's weak if he wants to be weak. But his strength is in you. So the more that we look at how strong we are, the more we become strong. The more that we look at how courageous we are, the more we become courageous. The more that we look at how awesome we are, the more that we'll believe how awesome Jesus is for us in us. The more that we know and understand that the door is going to open for you to, to go abroad and spread the word of God, the good news, the more that you're going to understand and know that it's possible. Everything that's impossible a lie the impossible comes from a lie seated from the enemy possible comes from the kingdom Holy Spirit from his head to his toe right now this battlefield of the mind that has been taking place we command this spirit to be broken right now and flee in Jesus' name. Over his physical body right now, we command every little 
bit to go. But we command <coughs> the physical in his legs, the muscle, the tissue, the tendons. We command it to be strengthened right now in Jesus' name. Right now. We command his back to strengthen. We command his shoulders to strengthen. We command his chest to strengthen. We command that heart to be strengthened anew right now in Jesus' name. Do the impossible, Lord. And we commit ourselves to doing the works of the kingdom right through and through to the end. Not our will, but yours be done. And there's a purpose and there's a reason why. And that's what we want to find out. It's a knees. Every little bit of fluid that's lacked and oiled, we dress it with anointed oil right now in Jesus' name. We dress it with anointed oil right now in Jesus' name. Knees be strengthened right now in Jesus' name. Anointed oil from head to toe, right over his body. <coughs> Let we thank you, Jesus, for who you are, who you're going to be in him, and who you're going to be for him. Father, when these days when he's on his own, <coughs> and he may feel scared and worried because he's unsure of the circumstances and the things that the world have created in his mind, bring peace. Bring peace. Let him know. Let him know. <coughs> Let him know. Fear. I command you to go right now in Jesus' name. Right now. We thank you, Heavenly Father.